Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. We are going to be doing a beautiful shadow work reading today. So one of my favorite things to do is shadow work readings and the way we're going to be doing this today is we're going to be getting a theme card and then we're going to be getting some additional messages around that theme card and we're just doing this in a few different layers. So if shadow work readings aren't really your vibe, this probably won't be the reading for you. And I will say this at the beginning as well, because I know a lot of people can find shadow work readings a little bit more triggering. And it's because they are sort of illuminating shadow aspects or repressed traits or something that we have not yet seen. And so this is why it can be a little bit more jarring or a little bit more triggering. But also the energy is always coming from a place of love. So it's just trying to illuminate for you what you may need to see at this point in time. So take every pile with a grain of salt, take it with the energy that it's intended. If it doesn't quite resonate, leave that one. So we're going to be sort of be doing this in like in layers, in piles. So every new one of these cards is going to be a new layer within this, a new um, energy, whatever is coming through with this. So only take the ones that you need for your personal journey. And as with all shadow work energy, you know, you can feel free to meditate on it, journal through it, whatever you need to do to kind of bring through more clarity and awareness of what is coming up for you in this situation. So let's get started. Let's get one card, not half the pack, just one card. And let's see, what is our first message here that we're looking at? What do we need to see around our shadow aspects? It might be something you've been working on for a while that maybe you need to find sort of a deep level of integration. That can be the case with a lot of shadow work. For many people, they kind of focus so much on uncovering and uncovering and uncovering and delving deeper into their shadows, but not spending enough time in integration. So it might be something that if this comes up as a repeating theme for you, maybe this is your indication to journey a little bit deeper into the integration phase. So we have this energy. The first card here is this energy of fog. And I love the fact that we do have our little mushrooms down here. So it could be anything. There could be some like, what I want to say with this is like, don't eat the poisoned sort of fruit. Like whatever's being offered to you, make sure it's not poisoned, tainted. It's a really interesting energy that I'm picking with this. This is also one of the new cards of the expanded deck that I haven't actually worked with very much. So I'm really excited to work with this energy today. So the way I'm really feeling this just in the beginning, though, is I just keep going to those mushrooms. Like, be mindful of what's being offered to you, making sure that it's not coming from a place of poison or deception, and really, like, trusting what you're seeing in the periphery, in the surface. Like, if things are a bit cloudy right now, maybe they're not quite ready to be seen fully. Maybe you need to get a different perspective. Maybe you need to take a higher view, wait for things to clear. But let's see what this is looking at. Let's get three of these. So first one we have here is the Hierophant. Let's get our three together. Oh, then we have the star. And then we have the nine of pentacles coming through. So I am just going to reshape these. So I am using the crow, the urban crow oracle, and I'm using the brand new Raven's Dream Tarot. So I just, I had to use these together. I've been waiting to be able to use these together. So I'm really, really excited that I can finally use these two decks together in a reading for the collective. It's really beautiful. So with this fog coming through with the, the Hierophant, the Star and Nine of Pentacles, again, only taking the messages that resonate and connect for you at this point in time. What I'm actually seeing with this is, again, this theme has been coming through quite a lot. And I think it's coming through so much for the collective because we are seeing a shift in this energy. But it's that new beliefs, new spiritual understandings, new ideas around spiritual perspectives are starting to I want to say come to the surface, but it may still seem a little bit foggy. It may still seem a little bit unclear. With this energy, the Hierophant, with the fog, it's like anything that doesn't quite feel like it's fully aligned at the moment. See if it's because you have like a, a quote unquote foggy vision towards it, that it's just not all quite, it hasn't all shown itself to you. Not everything is quite abundantly clear yet. And that is okay. There is still time to process what is coming through. With the star and nine of pentacles, what I'm actually feeling with this is if you feel like you have lost faith, you have lost hope in your destined path, if you feel like things haven't been working out, 
And it kind of feels like the future feels a little bit foggy right now. Again, because we're going back into this energy of fog. If the future feels a little bit foggy right now and things just don't seem as crystal clear and you don't feel like you have a full grasp on what you need to do to move forward or what it is maybe that even your destined path feels like anymore, allow some time to just really sit in more of a surrendered space and really asking like, what is this foggy energy that is clouding my vision for what my future destined path actually looks like? But also reminding yourself that sometimes we're kind of like, I want to say blinded in a way, we're blinded by too much noise, too much chatter in the external world. And we, we, this happens to us because we need to just go within or we need to just wait things out a little bit. So sometimes it feels like we don't have a clear vision. We don't have clear perspective. There isn't as much clarity as we'd like on what we're doing moving forward because things are just working out in the ether. They're working out in the background. So if things feel a little bit cloudy, a little bit foggy, allow that to be so for just right now. I just have to show you this card though. Oh my God, I have not seen this until now. I just didn't see it. I love this. Like when you don't see something, I've been playing with this card so much since I got it because I was waiting for it for so long. Um, and I've just noticed this, it's like a, it's like a wig. The Raven's wearing a wig. I never saw it before. Like one of those old school kind of wigs. That is pretty cool. I don't know why I find that really fascinating, but I do. That's really cool. Um, so yeah, allowing things to clear, allowing a greater perspective to be shown to you. Sometimes we need to spend a little bit more time in that still space, in sort of the internal world, not worrying so much about the external world because we need to like look within and really clear out anything that's resisting the movement forward. So it could just be that the, the cloudy vision is coming through for a reason. It's coming there. It's supporting you. The way I'm really feeling this is, I want to say this the right way, is that if you feel like there is fog, it's because you're being blinded purposely by the universe so that you don't make the wrong decision right now. So only take that as it resonates. Look at what is still kind of a little bit cloudy for you, what has like a foggy vision for you and maybe see where you need to do a little bit of internal work, holding on to more of that faith energy, but also working towards your goals. Like don't give up until you reach your goals either, but there isn't a rush here is what I'm hearing. It's time to be methodical and slow and really, really getting clear before you start taking like that fast charged action. <clears throat> Let's get another one. Another complete theme within itself. What we're actually going to do though is do this. Let's put these ones away. Next one we have is resistance. So what are we resisting here? Resistance is a massive theme right now. And definitely something that, you know, we can face in so many different ways in our life. But let's see what this resistance energy is wanting to share with us. What are we resisting right now? That's really what the question is. We have the Knight of Wands. We have two more. We have the Eight of Cups. Okay. And we have the four of cups. Okay. So what I'm really feeling with this level of resistance is resisting letting go of the things that you know are done. The things that you know aren't serving you. The things that you know are, I want to say like carrying a dead energy, carrying a dead weight, right? So it might be something you've worked through, you've journeyed through that life, death, life cycle. It might be a past relationship. It might be a past job. It might be something within your current work environment. It might be something within your family life. The, the list is endless, right? So but when you feel into this, only taking it for your personal situation is what is it within your current reality that you're still holding on to? It's like you're holding on to that dead corpse energy. You're holding on to something that is no longer alive. It's no longer has value. It no longer has that, that passionate sort of energy. It no longer has any spark within it. And by doing that, you're actually preventing that new spark energy from coming in. You're preventing new passion from coming in, new purpose, new desire, new creation, new aliveness. By holding on to that, that dead energy, that dead corpse energy, you're actually, it's almost like the way I'm feeling it is like there's a stranglehold on your passion. 
right? The Knight of Wands. There's a stranglehold on the passion, on your purpose, on that electric, fiery, alive energy within you by holding on to this dead corpse energy. So why are you resisting hold, like holding on? Why are you resisting the letting go? What is the fear that you hold around the letting go? Is it that you will change your identity? Is it that you think that if you let this thing go, that you won't get it again? My friend, <laughs> my friend shared such a funny reel today, such a funny reel on Instagram. And it was about dating. And um, it's, it's a little kid that's caught a fish. It's so funny. It's a little kid that's caught a fish. And the dad's saying, you've got to put this one back. And the, the kid's crying, but I want this one. And it's like, and it's like, no, you've got to put it back. You've got to put it back. And he's like, but I want it. And the little kid's crying. And the little caption is um, me when it comes to dating or something like that. And it was just such a funny thing. And this is what it's like, right? Sometimes you have to let that small little fish go. Sometimes you have to let things go, even though you want it really bad. I'm laughing because it's such a funny video. Like it made me laugh really hard because that's what we can do as humans. We grab on, we attach, we anchor to things that we know aren't serving us because we don't know what, if there's going to be another catch, right? We don't know if there's going to be another thing. What if we let that little fish go and there are no more fish? right? And that's the fear that we hold. So what, what is it that you're actually afraid of letting go that's creating this level of despondency of detachment, that's creating kind of this like lack energy within, that if you don't feel like you can open yourself up to receive something new, you're holding onto the energy of lack. So feeling into that for you, how are you still resisting the things that you know are in this kind of like dead corpse energy that is actually preventing you from opening yourself up to more of that magical fire? So Again, take all of that just as it resonates for you and your personal journey. Well, let's get another one. We're going to get four of these in total. So let's get one more. Two more, but one more now. <laughs> I just chat to myself while I do these videos. Sing songs in my head. <laughs> Let's get one. Okay, what do we need? We have gifts. So this is kind of this energy of it can be like collecting. This is what, you know, this is what crows can do. They collect little trinkets and, and little things. And it can be the energy of gifts. But what I'm actually seeing here is like collecting little trinkets that don't actually mean anything to you. So are you still holding on to things? Again, holding on to things that you know don't serve you, you know aren't you know, creating a beautiful space within your home, whatever it might be. But what kind of little trinkets, what little things are you still holding within your personal space? But also the other thing that I'm really feeling with this, it's quite an interesting one because I'm really focused on that key energy there, is I'm getting this message and it will be very specific just to a few people, is that it's like the key, We like let's just pretend we all have a lock on our heart and then we all have like a key to unlock that lock. And it's like the lock that you've been seeking is already within your possession. It's already within your grasp. It's it's already there, but it's just like lost in the sea, lost in the abyss of all of these little things. So only take that for you. If you feel like you've been seeking the key to unlock your heart, <laughs> it's already somewhere, somewhere in your little pile of gifts, in your little trinkets, in your in your little box of tools. Let's see what this gifts energy is all about though. Okay, so we have the High Priestess. We have Two of Wands, I love this card. Two of Wands and let's get one more. Oh, and we have two of cups. So two twos coming through and we have the two high priestess. So we have three twos there for anybody who likes the number kind of stuff. We do have a, a three, two, <laughs> three twos <laughs> numbers. Um, my brain is really, really chatty today. It's, I have a very, very active intuition channel coming through today so I do have a lot of I don't know why and it's very humorous today as well so please forgive me if you're new to my channel um sometimes this is just how we roll we we roll with a little bit of humor and uh 
sometimes it is that my intuition is very humorous and chatty. So anyway, three twos. If you like numbers, which mind you today, when I had to go out this morning and I was asking a very specific question to the universe about something very specific. And today was just one of those days where I saw every single spiritual number, 222, 333, 444, like all of them. I saw every single one. And the distance I had to travel would have been 15 minutes each way. And also in that, I have my own two spiritual numbers. I have my own two personal numbers that if I see them, I know what the answer is. I just, I know. And one of them is very rare. I very rarely see it. And it's always at the perfect time and something just shifts in my world and everything starts to align. And I saw all these other numbers. I saw all the two, two, twos and all the threes and the fours. I saw a lot of sevens. I saw a lot of um, triple sevens. And this is in a 15 minute drive either way on a country road as well. So it's really quite interesting just how much traffic was that and how many numbers I could see today. Anyway, on the drive as well, I saw my, one of my main spiritual numbers, my, my personal one. I saw it about, I don't know, maybe three or four times. I saw that one particular number. And then on the way home, just before I turned off into my street, I saw my main number. That is my rare number that I very rarely, rarely see. But when I see it, I know it, that it's something magical. I saw all these numbers and I'm like, I wonder if I'm going to see my number today to like confirm with absolute certainty this question that I've been asking. And just before I turned off onto my street, that a number plate came up with that number. So the numbers I know today for me are actually really quite funny because I saw so many of them this morning, which I found really fascinating. So, you know, sometimes these little things, they may seem like a little thing, but if you've been seeking answers, if you've been asking questions and really trying to sort of find a point of illumination and you've been asking to get, you know, a deeper sense of clarity, sometimes just a little thing like three twos, if twos are a really significant number to you, that can be really important. So yes, it is funny, but it also has a very, you know, deep significance if it aligns for you. Not everybody likes the spiritual numbers and that is okay as well. So what do we have here with our gifts, our high priestess, our tools? of wands and our two of cups what I am seeing with this is a couple things so going back into the, the one before this which is the resistance energy right so because I really do feel like a lot of these are following on so you have the resistance coming through the eight of cups the four of cups right being afraid of letting go what I'm actually seeing with this is there's a resistance here as well in your spiritual gifts because we have the high priestess and gifts in our spiritual gifts in your ability in your capacity not in your ability because the ability is innate right we have we have our spiritual gifts whether we can tap into them or not they are there we just need to learn how to awaken them but what i'm actually seeing is there's like this almost like a it's it's almost too cluttered this is this cluttering energy right this hoarding energy it's almost too cluttered to really have a really clear channel of your gift. So if there's a resistance in accepting, opening to your spiritual gifts, if you have a fear around it, if you have any kind of restriction or judgment or anything that you have placed on that of thinking, well, if I do start tapping into this particular spiritual gift, what will people think of me? This is what I'm really feeling with this energy. It's like you have a choice to make. You have this choice point to make and there are two paths ahead and you can either follow the pathway of listening to your intuitive gifts or you can follow the path of the mind. You can follow the path of the known. You can follow the path of, you know, the same thing that everybody else is doing, or you can listen to your intuition. You can listen to those, those high priestess, mystical, beautiful gifts that want to come through, right? We do have the snake here. We have a spider, which I hate, but you know, the spider is our creative energy as well. If there's something that you are wanting to create in this world, you have to be willing to open yourself up to that inspiration, to the magic that is there. And that is that muse energy. That is that point of that higher inspiration that just like lands like lightning. And it's such a beautiful energy here. But what I'm also feeling is opening yourself up as well to understand how you're traveling through this world, how you're moving through this world when you get to these two points. Are you moving towards what is loving for you? Are you moving towards your highest love or are you moving away from it? So that's kind of how I'm seeing this message here is if you continue to do things based on the mind, the known, what is safe, right? All of those things, then you're moving toward you're moving away from what your heart's truth is actually showing you a lot of the time. If you want to move towards your highest love, you need to be willing to make that that 
that choice, right? To follow your intuition, to follow your intuitive gifts, to follow that innate inner knowing to, that says, this is where love is. This is where everything I desire is. And I don't just mean love in terms of union, connection. I mean love in terms of self, in terms of what you do, in terms of how you show up in the world. Obviously, Two of Cups is to me the ultimate union card. It's To me, the Two of Cups is more union card than the lovers is. The Two of Cups is coming together of two spiritual beings in soul connection, in soul union, which is really beautiful, but it can also be that you are actually merging with self. You are finding inner union. And if you still have resistance towards the intuitive version of self, then you're actually resisting inner union. And if you're resisting inner union and you desire external union with someone, then you're actually going to resist external union as well. So take all of that as it resonates. That one was a little bit of a crazy one. <laughs> that was a little bit of an interesting one. But it was, it's, uh, it's what it needed to be for whoever needed to hear it. Let's get one more. <laughs> No, I want one. What do we have? We have a distance. So a couple things that are coming through with this. One is, are you willing to go the distance? I'm hearing ABBA coming through. The winner takes it all. The winner takes it all. Loser something, however the rest of the song goes. That's how that's what the song I'm hearing with this card. Are you willing to go the distance or are you going to give up just before you've reached your destination, reached your goal? There's a difference between quitting and realigning to a different path or to your higher path. Sometimes it feels like it doesn't quite feel like it's in flow, it doesn't quite feel like Everything is fully aligned and do you know what? This this impulse within me is telling me that I need to quit to move into something different, move into what is higher for me. And we have to really sit with that and ask, am I, am I quitting? Am I actually giving up because it's too hard, it's too challenging, even though I know it's actually what I truly desire? Or am I truly being guided to give this up to move on to something different? And a lot of the time when I see people giving up, I can when I hear them, I'm like, but you're still passionate about it. You're still really wanting that thing. It's just because it's challenging and hard. So there is a difference between quitting, giving up and realigning. And sometimes we need to really sit back within and ask, are we willing to go the distance? Because the soul path is not easy. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it and we wouldn't have the dark night of the soul shit that we have to go through. Right. If we, if we knew how difficult it was to follow our soul path, most people wouldn't sign up for it, but we sign up for it without, you know, unknowingly, unwillingly in a lot of ways. And we just have to continue on. But are you willing to go the distance? The other message with this is as well is, is there distance being created between you and another? So there are two very strong messages I'm getting with this. Are you creating distance with you between yourself and another, or have they created distance between you? Because there's something that needs to be healed there. So Take the one that resonates for you the most or take them both and we'll get some additional messages. But I'm getting those two very strong, clear things. For one group, it will be there's distance between you and another and we, we want to figure out why. And for the other group, it's because there is this like desire to quit. Um, even though you know it's actually what you truly want. So I'm going to actually go into both of those individually. So let's get two cards for the distance, going the distance. The winner takes it all energy. We're going to get two. We have the Ace of Cups. And we have Ace of Swords. So this is, are you willing to go the distance? This is fresh new energy coming in. Sometimes we need to wait. Sometimes we need to have that pause so fresh energy can come in. New insights, new, that, that lightning bolt of energy to say, this is what the truth is. This is what I've been waiting for. This is the insight. This is the clarity. This is what I've needed. But it really feels with this, it's like, don't give up just because it's challenging. Wait, pause. 
the way I always put this is you don't make a decision when you're in a chaotic state, right? We don't, we don't make rash decisions when we're in a chaotic state. We may want to, but if we do that, we'd probably ruin our life in a lot of ways. So it's always, you can feel the feeling, feel the chaos, feel the, the fear, feel the desire to quit, feel everything, feel it fully, but don't make a decision when you're in that chaotic or that, that overstimulated state. Wait for the energy to settle a little bit because when it settles, you'll find this new love. If I, if you'd have asked me a week or so ago when I was really, really unwell um, and I was taking a specific medication that I had to take for my lungs because I wasn't able to breathe very well because I was so sick and I would have told you a week ago, I'm never doing another reading in my life because I was so frustrated that I couldn't speak. I was so overwhelmed. I was so unwell. The medication was making me feel like batty and loopy in the mind. And it was just really, really foggy and really unclear. Um, and it was, it was a shit medication. I'm finally off it. Thank goodness. Um, but in that I was looking at my Oracle and tarot decks one day, cause I was, I'm still trying to sort out which ones are going into purgatory, which ones are being sold, which ones I'm keeping and taking with me. And I looked over and just like, they can all go. I don't want any of them. I'm done. I'm done doing readings. And if you know me, you'll know that I love doing readings. It's, it's, it lights me up inside, right? It's something that I am so passionate about. I love it. But a week ago, I probably would have given up doing readings if I'd have let myself follow the feeling that I was feeling when I was in that state. So we, we pause, we wait, we wait for that energy to pass and see, is that actually true? Or is it just that I'm having a bad day? right? And allow yourself to know. So for me, there is no quit in me. Like I, I just, I'm someone that just, I can't, I don't quit. I don't quit easy, but I will realign when I need to. And so I always wait and say, okay, if that is true, I'm willing to realign myself. I'm, I'm willing to, to shift what I need to shift, but I'm also willing to just let this be a day where everything feels chaotic and then wait and see. And as soon as that medication cleared for my system. As soon as my voice came back, as soon as this infection started shifting, I was like, oh my God, I get to play with cards again. And I felt so excited, right? So this new love came in, this new level of clarity and information and connection came in. Are you willing to let that chaotic energy, whatever it might be that you're feeling, like, just land, just be there for a moment and not make any decisions, knowing that the energy could shift tomorrow and only making a decision when you feel really calm and centered and grounded and always taking sort of that, that higher perspective. So the first thing we teach in shadow work, for example, it's the first thing I teach in our shadow work journey, um, is we have, well, first is compassion, have to have compassion and self-forgiveness when we approach this and a level of awareness, but we have to be grounded and we have to find a calm, centered state. If you try to do shadow work or if you try to make decisions when you're not in a calm, centered state and you're not feeling grounded, you're generally going to make a very rash, chaotic decision that could uproot your entire life. So this is why grounding, centering is really, really important to get that depth of clarity that you might need. So are you willing to go the distance? Are you willing to, to ride it out? Let's have a look at the one for if there is distance being created between you and another, what is that serving? What is the purpose of that? We have the Wheel of Fortune. Just have to put that over there. Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> Man, I'm in a weird mood today. I'm in a great mood today, actually. I shouldn't say weird mood. Let's get another one. And we have strength. Love that. Okay. What I'm seeing with this, if there is distance between you and another, whether you are in full-blown distance, is in separation, whether there's just distance being created from your end or from their end, for whatever reason this may be, what I'm hearing here is really, really clear message. So again, this will only be for certain people is that there is a karmic cycle that is closing out. So there are things that needed to be done without you in that picture, right? So sometimes we are rejected for protection. And this is really what I'm feeling with this particular one. Is there, if there is distance between you and another, it is for your highest good because there is some, and I want to say karmic debris, some karmic shit that needs to be cleared out that you didn't need to be a part of for that person to clear it out. 
And the other, with this strength card coming through, it really does feel like there is a level of vulnerability that is being created here. So I'm really feeling it as the vulnerability energy of the strength card. It's that the karmic cycle has to close out so that vulnerability can be open. But what I'm also hearing here is there has to be a level of inner strength that you are holding as the person who, you know, is reading, like watching this reading, there's a level of strength that you need to hold within to allow for this transition to take place without trying to control it, without trying to judge it, without trying to manipulate anything, to change anything. There is karma that needs to be cleared out here. I'm actually going to do a reading on this. I'm going to go into a reading on this specifically, um, but I'm just feeling this karma is being cleared out, but also you need to hold your level of strength and allow for, it's almost like their level of vulnerability is being um, opened and reactivated like they're learning how to be vulnerable while you learn how to be strong it's a really interesting energy so there was there's a there was a lack of vulnerability potentially with this person they didn't know how to soften to be vulnerable to be really open and that is one of the things that is currently working out in this karmic cycle so allow things to take the time that they need allow this wheel of fortune this this wheel of time to shift so that you can fully land into the situation that you truly desire is what I'm hearing with that. So they are just our brief little shadow work journeys today. A little bit different sometimes how we normally do it, but I always just follow the energy and how it wants to come through. So as always, take only what resonates, leave what doesn't. Shadow work is an ever-present, it's an ongoing journey. And we just take the little insights, take the little threads, take the little pieces that we need. And it might just be that you hear today, am I always quitting before I get to the goal that I desire. Is that something that I do, right? Maybe that's the part of the, the reading you need to take on today. Asking yourself, what am I resisting? Why am I resisting something that I truly desire? Why am I resisting the good in favor of the bad or in favor of the, the dead corpse energy, right? It might just be a simple phrase of what gifts am I still resisting because I'm afraid of how I'll be judged, that could be enough for you to journal into. So these readings are done to sort of give you little insights and triggers that you can go into in your own way to deepen your experience with them and to really start healing those parts within. So I hope this resonates. I hope it connects and gives you some clarity, some insights, some little journal prompts, some meditation prompts, whatever it is for you. As always, if you want to book a reading or a shadow work journey or anything like that, everything is always listed below. I cannot wait to support you in your beautiful journey. Sending you so much love to find souls and I'll connect again soon.